The city is demanding the state do more to help with the influx of migrants, now estimated at 600 new arrivals each day. In a court hearing yesterday, city leaders are asking a judge for more flexibility with the long-standing right to shelter mandate. Now, that rule requires the city to provide shelter to anybody who needs it. City Council Member Ina Vernikoff was at that hearing. She joins us this morning. She's part of the Common Sense Caucus of the City Council. I'm so happy to hear that there is a Common Sense Can Caucus. Can you believe there's still some common sense left in our city? I, I don't know, but, you know, I, let's get back to the right to shelter because um, some people say the city is not interpreting the right to shelter law properly. What what are you hearing? And is this part of what the judge is considering right now? So let's talk a little bit about the right to shelter. The right to shelter is something that stems back to the 1970s. Basically, a homeless man sued the city and state for the right to shelter in New York. And what's happening now is with this influx of migrants, we are totally misconstruing and misapplying this law which is really a consent decree that was signed between the city and state to provide shelter to homeless people we are now applying that to essentially everyone because we're saying okay there are all these migrants that are coming in and we have to we must give them shelter and we're giving them free hotels free food free cell phones that is not what that decree said at all it just says homeless people homeless new yorkers the people that are coming in they're not New Yorkers, they're not American citizens. They, they, they just came here, they just got here. They don't have any legal status. And the city thinks that we're supposed to, we're obligated to provide shelter. So the state, you know, went to court last week, as you know, basically said the city's mishandling this. Now what's the city saying about the state? Oh, well, you know how it goes. Everyone's blaming each other, but nobody is accountable and no, everyone's refusing to take responsibility for this, right? And honestly, Nobody should be surprised about this, right? In 2014, the city council passed a bunch of bills that declare us a sanctuary city where uh, local agencies cannot uh, comply with the law and help uh, federal law enforcement to deport illegal migrants. So we have that. And then, honestly, last year, the mayor said, we're sanctuary city, everybody's welcome. And that's the message that he sent everywhere, all over the world. So are you blaming the mayor? I think that there are a lot of people to blame here, but at the top of my list is President Joe Biden, who is literally asleep at the wheel. What is he doing? He's refusing to declare a state of emergency, which would allocate uh, funding immediately. He's refusing to acknowledge that we actually have a migrant crisis in our city and our country. So if we can't even acknowledge that we have a crisis, how are we supposed to deal with this? So let's bring it back here to the city because we're dealing with that right now, right, before we even talk about the federal level. What is the city's capacity to house these people? There is no capacity, which is why the city was in court. I was in court yesterday supporting... But they're still supplying, they're still providing housing for them. So For now, but we have spent $1.45 billion right now. We're expected to spend $12 billion mm. in the migrant crisis. We just cannot do it. We cannot handle this. So how is the law enforceable if the city has already reached capacity, which is what yourself and other elected officials are saying? So I think what they're trying to do, which is, I believe, what they were talking about in chambers yesterday was a closed uh, settlement hearing, settlement uh, proceeding. The judge basically told them, look, city, you need to come up with proposed locations, and the state has to cover it. And as you all might know, actually today there is a rally against uh, migrants coming in to live at the Floyd Bennett uh, Well, the city's, a, the city's against it, right? Because what, uh, you know, listen, I, uh, you, you're looking for housing everywhere you possibly can. And New Yorkers are already looking for housing as well. Right, but also, I mean, it takes money to get these facilities up to snuff for anybody to live there. Well, the state is providing $20 million. Is that enough? Is that enough? Are I we mean, going through millions Look, per day? We have these contracts. Six uh, million, th I think th I there heard are, recently there was a report. There are these no-bid contracts that have been signed to provide shelter and transportation to mm -hmm. migrants right now. Some of these contracts, as, as we heard, $438 million for uh, a contract with a company called Dago. Many other uh, contracts are being signed right now. They're all no-bid contracts because they're, we're in an emergency. We're in a state of emergency. Where's that money going? And I actually... Uh, proposed the bill to create a tracker similar to the Sandy tracker that would track exactly how much funding is going to these migrant contracts. So we're, you know, we're going to see, we're going to have a hearing uh, in the fall and we're going to have an oversight hearing. Well, that's a good idea because it is our money 
and at some point we're going to have to pay the piper. So we d just so you know, the Legal Aid Society, you know, they're they're supporting the migrants, and we have um, an interview with Joshua Goldfine that we want to share with you right now. It's our view that the best way for this to go would be for the governor to take charge of the process to. Um, have one set of rules that apply statewide and to direct where people should go based on need, based on communities that are best suited to receive people. Um, that would bring uh, a lot of, um, uh, of discipline and organization to this process that I think everyone has complained is chaotic. Do you think that the governor is doing enough or do you think the, the mayor should be, you know, calling the shots? I think we should say no more. We don't have the resources. We don't have the funding. We Who have says to send that? these Who buses back. Who says that? The governor oh, we, or the mayor? We, we, we both. They should have. What they should have done is, from the beginning, say, look. We welcome immigrants, right? We are a city and country of immigrants. We welcome them, but we are also a country and city of laws. So when you come here, please do it legally. But what happens since they are being dropped off here every single day? I think it was 6,000 was the last report from last week. Well, what no, are we 3, supposed 000, to do with them? 3,000 3, 3, in one week. I mean, but we're 600 over 100,000, I think we're even past that right now. You know, we should ask Joe Biden, what should we do? I mean, let's have him on, bring him on, bring him in here. Yeah, we'd like that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, all right, so where do we go from here, Ina? So we're going to see what uh, they're going to decide in court. The next hearing is September 18th. Um, I'll be there. We're watching this very closely. Look, they should just say, we, we, we made a mistake. We, we misapplied this law. The right to shelter is for homeless New Yorkers, not for the entire world. So basically, you're waiting for a judge to decide because a lot of people think the mayor has the d the decision right now to say, hey, listen, we're applying the law wrong, and so now we're going to stop. No? I mean, I think what's going to happen is they're going to end up settling, and they're going to end up coming up with more locations, and the judge is going to say the state has to pay, and I think we're going to just be going back and forth. But so what has to happen? Circle, what has to happen is it has to stop. It has to stop. And that's why you're part of the Common Sense Caucus. How many out of all the council member are, members are on the Common Sense Caucus? So we're eight. We're two Democrats and six Republicans right now. But I think we're going to get more next year. You do? Okay. That and this would... is a bipartisan issue. It's not Republican. It is. It's it not is. Democratic. It's... It is. City Councilwoman Ina Vernikoff, good luck. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me.